What's up, everybody, and welcome back to All the Things Sorta Truth, the alcohol fueled chapter by chapter reread of the Sorta Truth series by Terry Goodkind with some craft brew on the side. My name is Nate. And I'm Jade. And today we're going to be talking about chapter 34 of Wizard's First Rule. But first, we're just going to have a little chit chat about how everybody's doing. Things are kind of (laughs) shitty. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. None of us can have friends anymore. (laughs) How are your guys' situations wherever you're at? Me and Nate are kind of uh, shut down. My work is shut down. Nate still has to go to work. Yep. Um, But the kids are home. (laughs) And that's just wonderful. (laughs) <laughs> I think they're about a week in now. They're starting to go a little bit stir crazy. They're like, okay, we're off of school. Now let's start ripping down the wallpaper and breaking windows and eating all the food. <laughs> all the food. They don't understand yet. She's got to make it last. <laughs> yeah. No. Half the snacks are already gone. It, it's rough here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have a, have enough toilet paper, hand sanitizer? We we want to know. So let us know wherever you guys are, what the situation is, if you're doing okay, because we're thinking about you all. We hope everybody is holding up all right. And hopefully we're making you laugh <laughs> <laughs> during all of this. At least me and Nate can keep doing the podcast without having too much of an interruption because, you know, we're quarantined together. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I, for one, I'm just thankful that we have this book to read to like keep our minds occupied because, you know, if you didn't have something like that, I'd, I'd personally be going ape shit right about now. Yeah, it's filling our time nicely. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to try and figure out a way for people to um, to come on the show, even though they're not here. I know Nate found a way to help us feel not so lonely. <laughs> Yeah, I went ahead and got the podcast its own phone number. That number is 616-259-0025. You guys can feel free to leave us a message, let us know what you liked, let us know what you didn't, anything you would have written us an email about, which is still open. Um, But I'd also be really interested to hear any stories about how these stories might have affected your life. Yeah. So feel free to give us a call, 616-259-0025, country code 1, if you're outside of the country. (laughs) I just thought about that, too. (laughs) But yeah, we're looking forward to hearing from you guys. And who knows, you you might hear yourself on one of the podcasts if you guys leave a little message. If you guys have nothing to do, then it might be good, because this week's episode might be a little bit long. (laughs) There's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> there really is. Basically, this chapter is Richard and Kaylin having a talk. And Kaylin finally decides that it's time to tell Richard what it means to be a confessor. Yeah, after all this time, he should maybe be clued in. So we're going to do our best to get through this because it's very, very wordy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have fun and talk about confessors for the next, uh, I don't know, hour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the beginning of the chapter starts and Richard's sleeping and he hears some weird noises and decides that he should probably check it out. Yeah, he hears spitting. It's a fire. Yeah. That's not what I thought when I read it at first. (laughs) Like, what a weird sound to wake up to. (laughs) Somebody over there just eating sunflower seeds? Yeah, that's why you wake up slow and like, what the hell is that? (laughs) Well, apparently it was Kaylin she was cooking, and she had stuck around because she knew he had a headache, which was a little bit weird because they've known each other for, like, a hot minute, and she already knows that he looks different when he has headaches. Has he had headaches? They haven't talked about his headaches. No, I haven't. I don't remember them bringing up him having a headache. It's just weird that she was like, oh, yeah, I know. I know what your face looks like when you have headaches. (laughs) I've known you for like over a decade and I can't tell if you have a headache unless you tell me (laughs) or you have your hand to your head like, ow, I have a headache. (laughs) That's a pretty good tell. Yeah. You're just like, is something wrong? You can't like pinpoint the headache thing. So I don't know. Unless he's been having chronic headaches every night with the same face. That would make sense. But we don't know about that. Yeah. We haven't been shown that detail. So kind of hard to say, but it's weird. She's super observant, yeah. apparently. <laughs> um, and 
Speaking to that, she also knows how to make a snare because Richard taught her. And he's like super proud of that, which I thought was a little bit cute because even though he's super pissed off at her still or like upset, he has that moment of like, yeah, bitch. At a girl. <laughs> Look at you hunting and catching and killing and cooking and shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You're all right. And breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, yeah. And that doesn't hurt her chances at all, does it? You wake me up because you want to talk. You want you first thing in the morning. You want to have a long emotional talk. Pass. <laughs> first thing in the morning, breakfast is made, and while you eat it, I, I, I want to have a talk with you. Okay. And tell you you're right. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And tell me <laughs> I'm right. Yes. I like the sound of today. <laughs> okay. I'm a little less pissed. Keep going. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the kind of funny thing was that she was trying to keep watch so he could get better sleep. But she didn't fill him in on that. <laughs> yeah, she didn't let him know that she was there. So he still had to, like, effectively keep watch for himself all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, sleep fitfully. <laughs> so she didn't really help at all. Could have said that last night. I'm going to go 200 <laughs> yards into the woods and wait there. Uh, so you can just rest easy. <laughs> I'm still I'm still leaving, but, like, I'll watch for a minute, okay? <laughs> <laughs> nope, she just let him struggle through. <laughs> and Richard couldn't tell she was there. No, he just sobbed himself. No, because he sobbed like he'd never had before because nobody was around. <laughs> oh. So she was party to that then. Yeah, she was oh. watching from the woods him like cry his heart out. She pro That's probably why Kaylin was crying because she was watching Richard crying. Yeah. And it was just the saddest thing she's ever seen. Gut-wrenching, ugly sobs. <sighs> <laughs> it's funny because i'm laughing and you're like oh <laughs> it's sad it is i know how uh how long were you out there <laughs> the whole night you say ah <laughs> <laughs> shit that's unfortunate okay <laughs> so at this point she decides richard needs to know some shit you know like shit about our magic because <laughs> it's not fair that she keeps pretending that she's something she isn't because she knows he's not really super crazy about people who do that because we watched him get kind of pissed off at Shoda just a couple days ago about <laughs> all that. Right. And I mean, Caitlin's doing this in a little bit different sense. And that's actually not correct. She's not doing anything to Richard actively. <laughs> but that reference is like Shoda appeared as Richard's mom to Richard. And then obviously it was Shoda. Yeah. And Kaylin is appearing like a woman that he could potentially be with, start a family with. Yeah. And she's not. Right. And effectively, if somebody else tells him, even though she's not lying, she's being very upfront about a lot of it, it would turn it into a lie if somebody else were to tell him instead of it coming from yeah. her. So. He's agreed for it to be postponed. Like, he knows she's keeping a secret, but has said, you don't have to tell me. So if somebody comes in and does it for her, it cheapens it. Right. And I mean, okay, I know right now she's about to spill it all. And so this doesn't really matter. But at this point, it is causing like active problems for him not to know. And at some point, the seeker should be able to be like, okay, logically, I get it'd be cool for you to keep your secrets, but you need you need to tell me. Yeah. So that we can figure some shit out. <laughs> yeah, as the seeker, you would think things would change at that point. Yeah. Before you're the seeker, okay, hey, we can be friends. You don't have to tell me. Now I'm the seeker. Okay, now I need to know what's up. <laughs> right. And it'd be one thing if it never came up, but it's come up every time they've gone into anywhere with people, and it's making her super fucking depressed and want to kill herself, so maybe share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what follows here is basically a breakdown of what a confessor is, history of confessors, who Kalen is in the realm of the confessors, everything. Right. And there's a lot of detail here. There's a lot of back and forth between Richard and Kalen. Uh, we want to acknowledge right now that we may not have hit on every single thing, but we are hitting on the things that stuck out and felt like the most important to us. Yeah. Because otherwise it's going to get to real, like, point, 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 point. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are in school. Nobody's in school right now. Yeah. 
And I mean, to that point, we can't legally just sit and read the book on air. So (laughs) it might be close to that. And we didn't want to do that. So (laughs) besides Sam Juchavis has done that wonderfully. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So Caitlin finally tells him that she's called a confessor, even though it's really wild to me that he hasn't heard this term or picked up on like bits and pieces of it yet (laughs) from listening to the mud people say their version of it. I don't know. It's weird that he hasn't heard the name yet, but he hasn't, I guess. I kind of assumed he had heard it, but he just didn't know what it meant. I think he came close to hearing it when he pushed Toffee into the big ring of (laughs) shadow people. Okay. Because he had been touched at that point. Mm. And he says, command me, mother, and then she like kicks him into the shadow people. But that actually has a giant hole in that theory because Richard doesn't speak their language. Okay, so still, so it wouldn't have mattered. He could have said it out loud, and Richard wouldn't have been able to. I mean, that does point out that Kaylin is really versed in their language because it was natural yeah. for her to be like, oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> really, I think she was going to do it anyway. Yeah. But. but yeah, basically, once he does hear it, he's like, oh, shit, that's from that one book. The Truth of Counted Shadows, right? The Book of Counted Shadows. <laughs> The truth counted what? <laughs> okay. So. The swords of counted truth. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? Wait, what? But once Richard does hear the word confessor, he goes, oh shit, that's from the book of counted shadows. It's verified by a confessor. Still don't know what that fucking means, but cool. Yeah, he didn't know that a confessor <laughs> was a person. No. It could have been like a gadget of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> Which. I mean, we're going to find out here in just a bit, but Kalen kind of is a tool. Yeah. Just like the Seeker. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but power's passed down from mother to daughter, and that's been happening for a long ass time. They always had confessors. Like, there's no, like, skips. Right. And it's a power that's invoked by touch. So what happens is they don't have to bring the power out. Instead, they're always holding it in and they just (laughs) just like relaxing your stomach or farting (laughs) (laughs) and then you just let it out. And it's hard to explain exactly what the power does. But in short, it's the power of love, which sounds kind of (laughs) nice. It's nice. It's like a warm summer day. Well, it's also interesting, too, because. The seeker of truth, if he's like a good dude, seeks truth, obviously. But the power of the sword is based on his perception of the truth, whereas Kalen's confessions are always true. Like, it's not based on perception. It's like a real legit thing. Right, it's thing. actual fact. Right. Oh, ho, ho, this is going really deep now. <laughs> <laughs> Which shows the truth of your misconceptions of people. After they've mm. done horrible mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say that the, the seeker seeks truth and that the confessor always seeks love, which is actually kind of true and very fucking poetic. Except the confessor can't have love. Right. So also sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, you can't hear it because yeah, I have that was a awful. can and okay. you have glass. <laughs> So Richard makes a joke about being scared of the power of love, like, ooh, that sounds awful. And Kaylin glares him down. (laughs) It's immediately clear to Richard that she's not used to being, like, fucked with over her power of love thing because it's actually, like, serious. It's nothing to joke about. Yeah. It's not fucking funny, Richard. (laughs) Yeah, because the people who are touched are touched forever. Like... Until they die, they are completely changed. You can't change back. And she asks Richard if he thinks Shoda is pretty right here. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, she's pretty, but not as pretty as you. And starts laying it on real thick. And she explains that he was being bewitched by Shoda. He's like, oh, yeah, that's why I was feeling fuzzy and weird and I couldn't keep my focus. (laughs) But being confessed is not like that. It's not just a general pull towards somebody. To be confessed is 